Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Welcome to Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. It's always good to go away, but it's always good to come back too. Right? Right. Let's just take a moment now before we begin and ask the Lord to remove all the fears, all the worries from our minds. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God 
have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to his people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love you, what you command, and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Elikim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Elikim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut when he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Or a 
St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. But who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples who do people say that the Son of Man is they replied some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. As I said, it's always good to go away, but it's always good to come back too. You know the saying goes, bloom where you're planted, well, I'm planted here. Before we take a look at the gospel, let's look at it in this context. Let's say 
you're starting a business, right? You're the owner. And you're selling some kind of a product. And uh, you get a few people as sales reps, you know, to sell the product and to go out there. Well, every company has to start small, right? So, here's the situation. Jesus is around 30 years of age. And the goal of the Father is, I want the gospel message to go right through the whole world. I want people, the Lord in heaven wants his son to be head of the church, to tell the message to these representatives. So he picked, how many did he pick? Was it one? Was it two? How many apostles? Twelve. Whoa. Okay, twelve. He started with twelve. It's pretty small, isn't it? When you think of the context of the world. So anyway, he says to them, who do people say I am? Remember now, he's trying to get the message out there. So they say to him, well, you know, Elijah, maybe one of the prophets. But then he asked the second question, which was more important, because these are the ones that were going to go out and proclaim him to the world. Then he asked the second question, but who do you say I am? And uh, Peter spoke for the others, and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That was it. So he said, you are rock. Why did he call him rock at this stage, do you think? Well, basically what he was saying is, you're not listening to the whims of the people saying I'm this or I'm that. You know, they're saying he's a prophet or he's Elijah, whoever. He gave the right answer and he said to him, my heavenly father has revealed this to you. In other words, and this is important, the Holy Spirit now is guiding you. Because if the Holy Spirit is not guiding the church, we may we'll go home. Remember again that the Holy Spirit, in a way of speaking, is the electricity of the church. Without it, we don't have a church. It's darkness. We don't have the sacraments. We don't have the Mass. So he said, you are rock, because I can start my church when you are listening to the Holy Spirit and not listening to the whims of the people. That was at the beginning. Now we're here today, 2023. And a question I asked recently when I was away. We can find <coughs> altar bread. We can find wine. We can find vestments. We can find churches. But where are we going to find the priests? Where are we going to find the priests? Now I was away and I lost count in how many different priests I had to get to cover. Now most of them, not all, but a lot of them are near retirement, if not retired. Where are we going to find the priests? Now when I was away, I was on a retreat in Dublin, the capital of Ireland. I was in a seminary, huge building, huge, huge building. Over a period of maybe 200 years, there was 10,000 priests ordained from that church. That's a lot of priests. But most of those are 
near retirement or deceased. God calls at all ends of the earth at all times. I was sitting waiting for a plane in the airport and all you can do is, you know, they call it a gate, isn't it? When you wait, go to such a gate for your plane. I think that's what they call it. So I'm there anyway, and um, it was warm, so I kind of went over to the other side because it seemed to be cooler. And you know, you're waiting. And I was there, and I looked at the gentleman next to me. He was reading a book. He had red hair. And... Um, I said something to him like, are you single? He says, I am. I'm single. And he was on his own. And I got the impression that he was looking for something. So I asked him, what age are you? He says, I'm 33 years of age. And I said, you know, I was around your age when I went into the seminary, believe it or not. And I asked him, what are you doing? He says, I'm an engineer outside of Dublin. And then I said, uh, did you ever think of a vocation? And he said, well, in my mother's side, there are two priests. And I said, ah, sure, it's in the blood. You know? And uh, I said, you know, today, one of the problems is that there is no talk in the house, there is no support from the family or the friends. And he said, you're right, you're right. And um, I gave him the name of a priest in Dublin who has a community and would help him. But you have to talk about it. You know, that's gone in the houses today. The media has taken over, whatever has taken over. Now, think of the priesthood. Today, it's not a glorified social worker. Is it? Is it? What is it? Think of this for a moment. I remember listening to a priest and he said when he was very young, he just ordained, uh, he was called to a house. The man was dying, and he was very nervous. This was his first time, I guess, doing an anointing of the sick. So he went to the door, and he knocked at the door, and the wife came out to the door. She didn't have much faith, and she looked at him, and then she shouted, back to her husband. There's a priest at the door, but he's only a boy. So anyway, he came in, and the man was very old, and he was very feeble, and he said, show me your hands. And he felt his hands, and he said to the wife, no, no, my dear, these hands are 2,000 years old. You see, when the Lord Jesus began with 12 apostles, down through the years that you write to us here today, you know, if you wanted coffee or tea or whatever in the morning, you wanted hot, you plug in the appliance. But let's say the wire is broken. Electricity can't jump. It doesn't work that way. The priesthood that you know, the priest that you know, young or old, has hands laid on them right down through that 2,000 years, unbroken. Isn't that amazing? This is why we say the valid sacraments are in the Catholic Church. Many of the religions you know have splintered from it. And when a wire is broken, the electricity cannot jump. That's why we say 
that the unbroken succession of the apostles is down to the priests you know. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Today, in the Gospels, when Jesus said, you are rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church, we interpret that by saying he was the first pope, down to Pope Francis that you know. I will give you the keys. In other words, the sacraments again, especially the confession. I will give you the keys. We only have seven sacraments. Now, you know very well today because the media will keep you very much informed about us and how we get into trouble. See, human beings are human beings regardless of the status. Young or old, priesthood or not, Satan can penetrate any heart if we allow him. Even though today in the gospel, Jesus makes it very clear that Peter is the rock, and I'll give you the keys. Yet, a little later, a few chapters later, he denies the Lord. We are human, but he asked for forgiveness, and he got it, and he's still the first pope. Isn't that beautiful? He gives the forgiveness. We have to forgive. We're all human. I would not be standing here tonight if God didn't forgive me the past so I could become a priest and move on but we're still going to sin. This is why the keys are there, the keys of the confession. Now let me leave you with this last story. St. Francis of Assisi was the 12th century. All the Franciscans come from that area, right? He was the first. He never found himself worthy to be a priest. He was a brother, St. Francis of Assisi. The Franciscans that you know began from there. Now there's a story, even in his time, they had trouble with their priests. Imagine that. So they brought Francis in to judge the situation. Francis is standing there listening to them, and the people are shouting at the priest, and they wanted Francis to judge it. He listened, and then after finishing, he went up to the priest and took the hands and kissed the hands. I don't know if he's worthy or unworthy, but all I know is that these are the hands that bring me Jesus Christ every day. Amen? Amen. Let us now humbly profess our faith in one God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Saturday afternoon now, we humbly raise our hearts and our minds as we bring the needs before him.
For the church throughout the world, may God's love shine through our actions and words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. For all who exercise public office, may the Spirit assist them in fulfilling their duties with integrity, honesty, and a desire to help those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our for all Christians, especially those who are persecuted for their fidelity to the gospel, may God strengthen and encourage them in their time of trial. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all in this community of faith in need of prayers, may God enfold them with his mercy and grant them peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who have died, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, may God in his great mercy receive them into the fullness of life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. And for our mass intentions, Francis Gay, second anniversary, and Susan Boynton, rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Just pause for a moment now in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you know the needs and the hearts of each one present here, also those who are listening and watching on the airwaves. We bring all our prayers before you through the intercession of St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. For our good and all of Holy Church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestowed graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity, and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By rising from the dead 
he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. come to the most sacred part of the Mass, the Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with it him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <laughs> is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan 
and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The men of St. Joseph will be meeting on Saturday, September 2nd, after the 9 a.m. Mass. All men are welcome to attend. The women of faith will, will be meeting on Thursday, September 7th at 6.30 p.m. in the parish hall. All are welcome, and it is a potluck dinner. Faith formation will begin on Sunday, September 17th. The schedule is in the bulletin. Registration forms are available online at our website and at all entrances. There will be a meeting for faith formation teachers and volunteers on Sunday, September 10th at 9.30 a.m. in the parish hall. New volunteers are welcome. The Knights of Columbus will hold their 28th annual golf tournament this year on Monday, September 25th. More information is available in the bulletin. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to remind you again, every Monday, how many years is it, Francis? 80 years, the, the miraculous medal novena is said in this church. 8-0, 80 years. So everybody is welcome on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Also, Saturday coming is the first Saturday of the month, and there is Mass here at 9 o'clock for the first Saturday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you all for your presence, and may the week be one of peace, health, and good weather. God bless you. Thank you.